loves. For today's reading vlog, we are going to time warp to the 90s, so let me slip into something a bit more in style. Much better. So, for today's reading vlog, I am going to be reading two different horror novels that are set in the 1990s. The first is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This is a horror novel set in Mexico City in the 1990s. Our main character is a film editor who meets her favorite director of all time, who turns out to be cursed by a cult, and she has to help him edit his final film to break the curse. So for me, 90s, horror, Mexico. I'm very excited to dive into this one. The other 90s themed horror that I'm going to be reading is Dead Eleven by Jimmy Giuliano. In this one, a girl's brother goes missing and she finds a note in his room that has the location of this island on it. And when she goes to investigate, she finds that the island is permanently stuck in 1994, the best year since it's when I was born. So hopefully, we get in the spirit of the 90s and get some five star reads. So let's get started. So I have finished the first five chapters of Silver Nitrate. So far we've been introduced to who I believe are our main cast of characters. We have Monsora. She is an editor for movies, but her career's been stunted by the boys club that film editing is, and she's a big fan of horror movies. We then have our second character, Tristan, who is Monserrat's best friend from childhood, and he is an actor who's approaching kind of middle age. He started to lose parts by not being young enough, and also his career has been impacted by the fact that his girlfriend died in a car accident where he was also in the car and he got blamed for her party lifestyle. And then our third main character so far is Abel, who is the film director that Tristan moves in next door to. And because Montserrat is obsessed with old horror films, they have dinner together and he tells her about his unfinished film that he was working on in collaboration with this old Nazi guy. Masara decides that it would make a good kind of documentary to look into this lost film and that's kind of where I am at now as she's researching the history of this film to see if she could find proof beyond what this one old director is saying. I've been really enjoying it so far. A lot of so far exposition and dumping of the information, but it's film history and I was a film major. I love film history, so that's cool with me, but might be a little too much for other people. I am going to spend the rest of my evening reading this, but first I'm going to eat some Pizza Hut because I asked my sibling, what iconic food do you think I could order for dinner from the 90s? And their response was, the iconic red roofed Pizza Hut. So I got myself a Canadian stuffed crust pizza and I'm going to take a little break to eat this while I watch maybe Hercules. That seems 90s to me. <laughs> archery today but hopefully we'll get to read a little bit before I have to leave for that we'll have my coffee I got to page 178 last night so I'm about two-thirds of the way through there's been a couple interesting things that have happened so far but it's just been a lot of exposition this is very much a tell don't show kind of book all of the background on the history of the movie and all of the background on this nazi magician dude has been either able dumping the stories at us or like excerpts from either the nazi guy's book or this letter that 
Montserrat found in the binding of the book. I'm kind of on the fence about it because there are some interesting elements to this story here. The fact that silver has magical properties and they used to use silver nitrate film so they could cast spells via cinema. That sounds like a really cool concept, but I'm just not getting as much action as I would want. It's just been a lot of information being dumped. So I'm hoping for the last third, we have established enough of the information we need to know that we can get some action-y bits here. And I'm going to make some coffee and I will keep you updated on when I finish this. So I've now finished Silver Nitrate and I got my spreadsheet up trying to determine what my rating for it is. So starting with characters, I think I'm gonna give that a four. I did really enjoy the characters in this book, particularly Tristan and Abel and Jose. I really liked them. I found them to be really interesting. Masara was all right. I just didn't like her quite as much as some of the other characters. I'm gonna give it a four for characters. In terms of atmosphere, I'm going to give it a three. I didn't get the 90s vibes that I was hoping for. There were a couple like one-off mention of pagers, but that was it. Also in terms of Mexico City as the setting, there were a couple references to the Mexican market, things like that. Not quite as vibrant of an atmosphere as I would have wanted, so I'm gonna give it a three. Three. Writing style. I'm going to give writing style a two. <sighs> this book took so long to get to any actual plot of things happening in the current day. It was a lot of storytelling and research on what happened 30 years ago. I think this book would have benefited from being dual timeline and having the ability to actually show what happened 30 years ago rather than just being told it through a letter, through able stories, etc. I think that could have strengthened the connection to the past events that I had, whereas it being told kind of secondhand didn't really connect to it as much. Plot? I don't know. How do I feel about the plot? I am going to give the plot the four because I think I enjoyed the plot. I just didn't enjoy how the plot was told. And since I already deducted points for that under writing style, I think the plot, there were some interesting concepts. There were some interesting ideas. I'm gonna give that a four. For intrigue, that's gonna be a three because the way that the writing style was done really bogged me down in terms of being intrigued as to what was going to happen next. But there were a couple points where, say, Victor saw his dead girlfriend. There was a part where Montserrat sees the dead Nazi guy. There were kind of intriguing plot points throughout that was like, yes, what's happening next? But then we'd kind of go back to the exposition again. So I'm going to give that a three for intrigue. There were nuggets here, but not quite as frequent and drawing as I would have liked throughout. Logic relationships, I'm gonna give a four. I thought that the magic system was very well thought out. I liked the way that it was <laughs> described as to how the Nazi came to this specific style of magic and then also how Montserrat made it her own and Victor, how he channeled it. I think that the logic of all of that magic system was very interesting. I also think that the relationships were fairly good. I didn't get as much build up between Victor and Montserrat as I would have wanted for it to have the ending that it did have. A four seems pretty good based on the logic of the magic system. Lastly, for enjoyment, I am going to give this a three. I did enjoy elements of it. It's not something I would necessarily recommend to other people or something that I would want to read again. So I'm going to give it a three for enjoyment which puts my average rating at a 3.25, 3.29, but we'll round. 3.25 for silver nitrate, not quite the 90s vibes, as strong as I wanted. I enjoyed what I read of it, even if it wasn't my favorite. And now that that one is done, I can get started on Dead 11. And given that the plot of this is very specifically about an island stuck in the 1990s, I'm hoping it gives me the 90s vibe 
that I came to party with. I'm gonna get started on this and I'll give you an update in a bit. I'm about 100 pages into Dead 11 now. My issue with Silver Nitrate was that it should have done dual timeline. This doesn't have that problem. <laughs> I think I'm in at least three identifiable timelines here. We have Harper, who is current time, and his sister has gone missing, and he finds this like crazy conspiracy wall at her house about this island. So he travels to this island and he's trying to find out where his sister is. We're also following his sister's timeline and she found the name of this island scrawled on the floor of her dead son's bedroom. So she travels to the island and is trying to find out basically why her son even knew about this island and she got a job in the church there. And then further back in time we have the teenager who her son was maybe having a relationship with. And she is kind of hinting that there's something strange about this island in that people feel the need to recreate a certain night over and over again. And that night happens to be in the 90s and she's basically saying she doesn't really believe in whatever curse is facing this village that makes them have to do this. So I am pretty much enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying that it's switching back and forth timeline. There's also a bit of mixed media. So I'm enjoying that there's a little bit of change up in form. It's helping to keep it interesting and they're very slowly revealing things in bits and pieces across these timelines. I did just genuinely get the Wiggins because Willow is doing this interview with her husband when she was back in college and her husband was like a psychology student and she was doing an interview about nightmares and she talked about this like messed up man that she used to see in her nightmares. One of the things that does still genuinely scare me is the like uncanny valley pale man stereotype type thing and that's definitely in my mind image of when she was describing this nightmare what I was picturing. And I got the wig in. I'm enjoying this one so far. Probably more than I was enjoying Silver Nitrate at this far in. So I'm going to probably go to bed pretty soon and catch up with you tomorrow. Good morning, it is now Sunday and I read another 100 pages of Dead 11 this morning. First to address the outfit, I was already planning to wear this shirt because it is vintage 90s stolen from my dad. But coincidentally, the island's basketball team is the Mudheads, so this is strangely on point for this video. Anyway, another 100 pages into Dead 11, in the timeline of Willow, which is the sister whose son died, the teenagers pulled a prank on their teacher and essentially replaced his VHS that he watches every night with a different VHS, and it scared him so bad he pissed himself, and then he disappeared. From what I'm understanding is if you break your routine on this island, you end up seeing an apparition of someone from your past, and you're compulsed to follow them into the woods and then you disappear. Really intriguing premise so far. I'm enjoying the separate timelines as it helps to give you just enough information without revealing the whole thing quite yet and kind of breaks up the flow to make it a bit easier to read. I was a little intimidated by this book being over 400 pages but it's written nice and smooth. It's a Sunday morning and I want some coffee. I'm going to Friends-esque go to a coffee shop and read for a bit and I'll give you some updates later. Two sugar-free vanilla lattes and a croissant later, I have now finished Dead 11 and I'm just about to calculate my caw pile for it and wrap up my final thoughts. So for the characters, I'm gonna rate this a five out of five for characters. I really enjoyed the varying perspectives that we got on this story. So on this island, they're basically recreating a single day in the 90s to avoid something bad happening. And there are some within the world who do believe that what they're doing is helping and other people who don't believe it and think everybody's making it up. Within that, 
people who believed for different reasons. So I thought that having so many characters we were following really did help understand what was going on in this plot. And then also me being terrible with character names was actually able to follow and keep track of who was who as we switched the perspectives. So I thought they were written distinctly enough, which was a real asset to me as someone who has trouble keeping character names straight. In terms of atmosphere, I am going to give it a four out of five for atmosphere. Compared to Silver Nitrate, this definitely gave me more of the 90s vibes that I wanted, but it wasn't actually set in the 90s. It was just that single island in our modern times recreating a day from the 90s. And there were some references to 90s technology and events like the OJ Simpson car chase, CRs, things like that. And I thought that that created a pretty decent atmosphere. For the writing style, I am going to give this a five as well. I really liked the way that it pulled in the different character perspectives and the way that you learned things slowly bit by bit as to what was going on current day when Willow, the sister, was investigating the island and then some of the things that happened pre-Willow and the mixed media, audio recording, transcripts, text messages, some news article really helped flesh out how the world was. So I did really enjoy how this was written. So five out of five from me. Plot as well. Um, hmm. So in terms of plot in this book, you have Harper who is trying to investigate his sister Willow's disappearance. Willow went to the island because she saw the name of the island written in her deceased son's room. I initially think I said in an earlier update that he was dating a girl from the island. I got my characters confused. That's not true. The girl is unrelated at that juncture when her being baited to the island. And then we get revealed as to what happened to Willow to disappear on this island, and then also why the island is repeating this day from the 90s over and over again, which I thought was really interesting. I thought had a pretty good payoff at the end. Didn't go where I was expecting it to go. I think I'm gonna give this a four for plot because it did keep me guessing, but it didn't necessarily wow me. Intrigue though, I'm gonna give a five. I sat down and read 300 pages of this in the span of like four hours. Clearly, I was intrigued. I wanted to know what was gonna happen next. I wanted to know why the island was like, how it was, what happened to Willow, whether Harper would make it off the island safe, what happened to Lily, cause she hates living on the island and was trying to get a basketball scholarship to be able to leave the island. I was interested in the characters. I was interested in the solution to the plot. I think I'm gonna give that a five for intrigue. Logic and relationships, I'm also going to give a Five. I thought that in terms of why the island was like that, everything made logical sense. I didn't really see any huge plot holes that I could think of. And then also the relationships between the characters, how they all were interconnected, how they fit together, I thought was also really clear and well done. Oh, so I'm gonna give it a five for logic and relationships. In terms of my enjoyment, I am going to give it a four. Clearly, I sat down, read like 300 pages of it in a morning. I was clearly enjoying it because I would have been distracted on my phone if I wasn't enjoying it and was struggling to get through it. But I don't know if it's something I would necessarily continue thinking about for a while and start recommending to everyone. I think a four is a adequate score for this. It's not going to be a new favorite, but I did enjoy it and don't regret having finished it. This ends up being a 4.57 round down, 4.5. So this ends up being the superior 90s themed horror of the weekend. Thank you so much for checking out this blog. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. Leave in the comments down below what your favorite trend of the 90s was, or if you have any 90s themed horror that I should be checking out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. are compulsified.